This is the City of Wapanka City Plan Commission meeting. Welcome, everybody, to our uh, special City Planning Commission meeting. It's uh, 4.02 p.m., and we'll begin the public hearing part of this meeting tonight. Uh, in attendance uh, for commissioners, we have uh, Henry Velliker, Justin Behrens, our Director of Public Works, uh, Mayor Brian Smith, Ivan Wayne, and then we have uh, staffing it up with Jarrett Reku, who is our Development Director. Um, and we are expecting one other commissioner to, to be here in just a couple minutes, but we'll, we'll continue on with that. So we have a number of uh, public hearings tonight, and we'll uh, just go in order. Right, Jarrett? Okay. All right, so our, our first uh, public hearing is a conditional use permit uh, for the Wapaka Historical Society at 525. Oak Street, and before I ask people to speak, uh, I'll let Jared just explain what this conditional use permit is. Certainly, and I, the font should not be like that, so I apologize if that is hard to read. Uh, this first one is for a conditional use permit for the Wapaka Historical Society uh, at their train depot museum at 525 Oak Street. Um, if you remember, we have gone through and we were uh, changing the zoning for this one, uh, getting it to a, a zoning district that fits with their land use, but also allows them to have a sign as they were looking to brand all of our historical places uh, and have signage for them just to make them a little more apparent. So really, this is just part of that cleanup process to, um, you know, they've already been rezoned. So now that they're in this new zoning district, they need to obtain that conditional use uh, to just get everything in compliance. Um, Nothing with the use is changing. They have always operated um, under the museum uh, land use at this train depot. Um, you know, they hold their, their different uh, events and stuff for education and whatnot. But, um, again, just more cleanup than anything for this one. Thanks, Jared. So at this time, then, we'll take testimony in favor of the conditional use permit uh, for the uh, Wapaka Historical Society. Uh, if you would like to make comments in favor of, just step up to the podium, give your name and address for the record, limit your discussion to three minutes or less. Anybody that would like to give testimony in favor of? Anybody that would like to give testimony in favor? If not, uh, we would like we would take uh, testimony in opposition. Anybody that would like to give testimony in opposition? All right, we'll declare this conditional use permit uh, public hearing closed at uh, 4.05 p.m. Next up, uh, we have uh, Sunny Day Child Care and Preschool. This is also a conditional use permit. And, Jarrett, you want to just let the public and commissioners know what this is? Of course. Uh, so this is, again, another cleanup. So... Um, we went through the businesses and parcels in this area as we prepped for our potential River North uh, neighborhood uh, development to get started. Uh, upon taking a look, we realized that a lot of the parcels that already have businesses on them were not in compliance with our zoning code. Um, as such, we felt it necessary um, to clean up this area, uh, just again to prep for the potential development. Um, so we went through, uh, this is one of the parcels that changed zoning from a heavy industrial district uh, to a B3 district, which is more of that general commercial, um, better suited for uh, you know, land uses such as sunny day child care. Um, so as part of this, uh, the child care facility, any large ch child care facility does require a conditional use. Um, so they are coming through to finish cleaning up their process and get that conditional use. Um, so again, another another cleanup. All right. And again, at this time, then we'll take testimony in favor of the conditional use permit for sunny day child care. Anybody that'd like to give uh, testimony in favor, step up to the podium and limit your discussion to three minutes or less. Any testimony in favor of? Any testimony against? Any testimony against? 
All right, I'll declare this hearing closed at uh, 4.07 p.m. And we'll go on to the next one. Uh, this conditional use is for Mount Tom LLC, uh, owner Harmony Towers LLC, and AT&T Mobility, the applicant. Uh, the street is uh, Bailey Street. And again, before I open this up for... Uh, Testimony, I'll, I'll let Jared just explain what's going on here. Of course. Uh, so this one, this is a conditional use permit, and it is accompanied by a site plan review application uh, for a new mobile tower um, on Bailey Street. Uh, the cell tower site was originally part of a larger tract of land, uh, which was then subdivided to accommodate um, a different use. This different use came to be that it was a proposed mobile tower, um, the mobile tower details, of course, are gone over more in the um, site plan review, uh, but it is uh, approximately a 200-250 foot tower uh, that would sit uh, behind um, or closer to Bailey Street uh, than the current tower complex uh, just at uh, off of Bailey Street at 250 Bailey Street. Um, so again, this would be looking to allow the mobile tower land use on this parcel um, as it is a conditional use. And then further details would be uh, discussed more in the site plan review. Okay, so everybody understands uh, what this conditional use permit is for. Uh, anybody that would like to give testimony in favor of this conditional use permit for this property, again, as I said before, uh, step up to the podium and uh, just give your testimony. Hello, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Jonathan Lujak. I'm an attorney with Michael Beston Friedrich. Uh, we represent Harmony Towers, the applicant. Uh, with me is Michael Doran from Buell Consulting. And he was uh, one of the consultants who helped put together this application. Um, so this application is for a new cell tower. Um, Harmony Towers is a tower builder, and this is a new tower um, that they would like to have AT&T as the anchor tenant on. Just for more background information, AT&T is currently a tenant on an existing tower in the area uh, known as the SBA Tower, and they're looking to move to this new tower um, in order to have more favorable lease arrangements and ultimately to provide better coverage and capacity for the area. And I think Something important to note is in terms of uh, capability and capacity, the new lease arrangement that Harmony and AT&T will have, uh, not only on this tower but on a variety of other towers throughout the state, is uh, basically permitting AT&T the flexibility to go in, repair, enhance, and upgrade that equipment pretty much at its own discretion. Currently, the structure under the existing SBA lease, which is set to expire, in about a year or so, um, requires AT&T each time that it wants to repair or upgrade that equipment to basically go through a negotiation process with SBA. So it's a costly process, it's time consuming, and ultimately it slows down the capabilities or capacity that this area can have uh, for a mobile service support. And so um, we're here today to answer any additional questions there are any um, happy to provide more clarification if we can okay uh, again understand that this is the public hearing portion of that uh, so we'll just take testimony in favor of that you can obviously stick around for the regular city planning commission where commissioners would have the opportunity to ask you questions great if they so choose Thank you. all right uh, anybody else that would like to give testimony in favor of any other testimony in favor of? All right, uh, we'll take testimony in opposition. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Claude Krafcek. I'm an attorney with O'Neill, Cannon, Holman, DeYoung, and Lang in Milwaukee. And I'm representing SBA, which owns and operates the existing tower located roughly 100 feet away from this proposed location. The existing tower is located on land owned by the city of Wapaka. And in fact, the tower was originally built and owned by the city of Wapaka. 
but was sold to SBA in 2008. SBA, uh, since that time, has, has been the owner, operator, and tenant of the city's land. So this tower already includes um, AT&T, as well as the city, uh, communications antennas, and uh, four others as well. So it's, it's uh, a very well-utilized site. Uh, we are opposed to this application because, in our view, there is no need for another tower here. We've talked about amendments and lease provisions. We, we have, since we took over this tower in, in 2008, SBA and AT&T have negotiated and agreed upon five separate lease amendments to allow them to change things out at the site. That's one every two or three years. There's been no issues with renegotiating these leases uh, re or, or allowing for these amendments. In fact, the most recent one was just approved, just signed July 9th of last year, 2021. So SBA's got a good, long relationship with AT&T, and we've accommodated their needs all along. We don't believe that this is about providing better coverage. The, in fact, we've submitted... Uh, to Mr. Raku, and I'm hopefully he's uh, provided to all of you. I submitted a, a number of documents which indicate that, uh, in fact, the coverage essentially will replace the existing coverage, which makes a lot of sense. We're 100 feet away. How, how, how much better could it be? There's also an issue of the tower height. They, they may claim that uh, they need to be at a taller height. 225 feet is what they propose for this facility. The existing tower, and these are both lattice towers, by the way. The existing lattice tower is 195 feet. However, it is capable of an extension up to 232 feet. You've got a uh, structural engineer's letter in your packet that verifies this information. If AT&T really needs to go to 225, we can accommodate them at this site. There's no need to build a, du a duplicate tower. Um, there's... Quite a number of other things I've submitted, uh, all of which verify that that this site is not about um, providing better coverage. This site is all about economic leverage yeah, that that AT and T is trying to obtain over SBA. And uh, frankly, um, there is a provision under Wisconsin law. I think you realize under Section 660404, municipalities are somewhat limited in what they can do uh, when it comes to applications for new communications towers. However, the policy in the state of Wisconsin has always been, and it's codified in the statute, that co-location is the best option. And if there is an existing facility <laughs> available for a, for a carrier to use within their search ring, they should use that, or they should demonstrate why it's not, avail why it's not uh, uh, providing the same service for themselves. I don't think that's been done in this case. Uh, I think what they're going to tell you, and, and they've already alluded to it, is this is all about the economic burden on AT&T. But let's remember, AT&T is a multinational, publicly traded company. And, and uh, you know, if this is all about AT&T saving some dollars, well, that's frankly, in my view, not a good reason to uh, uh, approve a new tower that's, that's 100 feet away. At the same time, we're willing to talk to them. We're willing to talk to them about negotiating better lease terms if they want to stick around here. So we, we are interested and willing to talk about the economics as well on this, on this <coughs> transaction. So I just want to point out to you, there, there is a, um, there's very little case law on Section 660404. It's relatively new. It was only adopted, in, I believe, in 2013. However, there is one case that I think is important to note, and it's called the Ecosite case. Uh, it involved the, the city of, excuse me, the town of Cedarburg. And in that case, T-Mobile um, was looking to build, a, have a new tower built by a, a company called Ecosite. Very similar to the situation. T-Mobile's the service provider, and um, Ecosite was the tower developer. In this case, we've got SBA as the tower developer and, and AT&T as the service provider. Now that, that permit was turned down, and that case went up to the Wisconsin Court of Appeals. I just want to read 
one sentence out of the concurring opinion in that case, uh, because I think it's important. It says, the fact that T-Mobile, in this case AT&T, wants to save money, and Ecosite, in this case Harmony, wants to make money, is not a legitimate reason to override zoning regulations. So the economic burden argument, I believe, is, uh, is a red herring. And, uh, you know, it, it seems to me that if the city of Wapaka wants to see towers repeated all over town, then you approve this. But if you want to follow the, uh, the, the longstanding practice in the state of Wisconsin to require co-locations of multiple providers on one, one tower, then you turn this down and keep them, keep them where they're at. I thank you for your time, and I'm available to answer questions. Claude, thank you. Sorry I had to run out for a second, but I think I got the, everything that you wanted to talk about. And you're certainly welcome to stick around for the regular Planning Commission meeting to have that discussion, uh, and if anybody has any questions. <clears throat> any other testimony in opposition? All right, I'll declare that hearing, this hearing closed at uh, 418 p.m. Uh, next up. That was. Oh, uh, okay. You're right, I'm sorry. So, uh, since we did have testimony in favor and testimony in opposition, then I should give uh, both sides the opportunity to, to re for some rebuttal here. So, if you would like to give some rebuttal testimony in favor of you certainly have that opportunity thank you um, I'll try to work here in reverse order briefly um, Claude just mentioned the eco site case from 2019 or I believe that was in 20 yeah excuse me the decision was in 2019 um, but after that case or, or rather after the facts of that case existed Wisconsin acted a law um, known as Wisconsin Act 67, and that was somewhat in response to that particular decision. And what that state law does is it sets parameters on how municipalities should evaluate and decide upon conditional use permit applications. And essentially what it states is where an applicant has demonstrated that it meets all applicable zoning requirements, then a municipality should issue a permit in that particular instance. Um, conditioned on the fact, of course, that if there are reasonable regulations or other conditions imposed by the municipality in exchange for issuing that permit, that the applicant agrees to abide by those. Uh, in this particular case, the um, local administrative review revealed an, uh, an appro excuse me, approval, um, recommended approval, in that all of the requirements in the local zoning code had been met. And uh, in addition to that, our application actually goes through step by step how the state conditions are met as well. Um, now, Claude also mentioned something about economic burden. That's only one of the three conditions under the state statute that an applicant needs to demonstrate with respect to an application for a new tower. So, yes, it's true that um, AT&T is a global corporation. Um, however, in our application, there's been um, uh, a sworn statement from a vice president of AT&T who um, has projected at this stage already just with the different in rent um, charges under the new Harmony Tower lease that AT&T will save approximately $2 million. And that's before we even get into additional potential charges for having to renegotiate terms to upgrade equipment and things of that type of nature. Um, so economic burden is one concept, but overall, um, there's two other conditions. One, that continued co-location is technically infeasible, and also that um, by moving to a new tower, there's going to be not the same type of coverage or capacity. That's uh, a key word that the legislature chose to select, not the same, not necessarily better, but different. And I believe Michael submitted to the city earlier today, if not before that, propagation maps showing the difference in coverage that AT&T will have um, on, uh, from, from the new tower. And um, based on the additional height of being at 225 feet, uh, Michael actually just remarked to me before this that 
the differences in coverage on those propagation maps is the most significant in this instance that he's seen in his approximate 30 years, 25 years in the industry. Um, so just wanted to highlight for you all that um, there's a variety of different factors and conditions that an applicant must prove. We believe this application uh, has demonstrated both meeting all local zoning requirements as well as those conditions imposed by state legislature for erecting a new tower. Thanks. Just briefly, uh, I'm Mike Doran, and I'm the one who submitted the application. I wanted to touch base on the um, the, the SBA being a lot, you know, telling us that the tower can be extended. In fact, it can, but what SBA doesn't like to mention is we pay for it. And I've done this, we've done um, extensions before. In fact, I'm involved with one down in North Carolina right now. And the tower company, we need an additional 20 feet. The tower company says, we can give you another 20 feet. However, you, you pay for it. Um, that is the custom that, I mean, that's what we do. I mean, that's what they'll come back to us and say. We'll give you the extra 20 feet, but we'll pay for it. And that can be upwards of, besides strengthening the tower to accommodate, um, upwards of $100,000, $150,000. And that's not, a, that's not an exaggeration. So can they? Yeah, they could extend it, but it'll be our cost. So I just want to make that clear. Thank you. Uh, Claude, I don't know how to pronounce your last name again, but uh, so I'll just ask you if you have some. You can rebuttal. call me Claude. That's fine. Okay. Thank you. Uh, it's it's craft check, but Claude is fine. Um, I want to point out two things. Number one, Act 67, which my friend Jonathan referred to, was adopted in 20. Uh, 17, the decision in Ecosite came down from the Court of Appeals on July 24th, 2019. S Chapter 67 does not eliminate Section 660404, sub 2, sub B, sub 6, which says that when submitting an application, the applicant must submit an explanation in its, uh, an explanation detailing why the applicant chose the proposed location and why the applicant did not choose co-location, including a sworn statement from an individual who has responsibility over the placement of the mobile service support structure, attesting that co-location within the applicant's search ring would not result in the same mobile service functionality, coverage, and capacity, is technically infeasible, or is economically burdensome to the mobile service provider. That's where they're hanging their hat, this economically burdensome language, which frankly is, is a little squishy, and I, I'm not sure what it means, but at least according to one judge in the state of Wisconsin, it does not mean that because one company saves money that there's an economic burden to co-location. If, if we want to eliminate the longstanding policy of co-location in this state, well, then you go ahead and, and approve new towers wherever they are. There's certainly a cost to building this tower. And, of, of course, there's a cost to extending the, addition, the existing tower. So there's a cost either way, and that cost is much more substantial to build a new tower than it is to extend the existing tower. I, I guess I'd also like to point out that, you know, as the city was the original owner of this structure and is now SBA's landlord, I think it's important to... to uh, understand and honor the terms of this deal that was made in 2008 when the city sold this tower to SBA. The idea was there are six tenants on this tower. There's going to be ongoing um, revenue. That's why SBA made the decision to make to make the purchase. That's um, what the purchase price was was based upon. If you allow AT and T to go 100 feet away, well, then you're going to have to allow Verizon to go 100 feet away on another site because they can establish all the same things, I assume. So the question is, when one tower suffices for the needs of all of the uh, service providers, do you want two or three or more? And I think that's what this all boils down to. As far as coverage goes, there's a new site, I understand, that was approved by this body in, in 2019 uh, for a company called Parallel infrastructure for a Verizon site about 1.3 miles to the southeast. My understanding is that was approved but not built yet to date. 
Horizon apparently had some changes in, in their business plans and decided to put that one on a back burner. But that tower has been approved. If AT&T wants to provide better service to the people in this town, they ought to talk to Parallel Infrastructure and get them to build that tower that's already been permitted and, and put additional facilities there rather than replicating their coverage 100 feet away from their existing site. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> All right. Okay, at this time, then, I'll, I'll close this hearing, this conditional use permit hearing. Uh, it's uh, 427 p.m. Uh, we have uh, another conditional use permit. This is for Fablees LLC at 251 Grand Seasons Drive. And Derek, you want to just tell us what that's about? Of course. Uh, so this uh, conditional use permit was brought forward by Fablees. Uh, they do own the property directly adjacent um, to the property we're discussing here today. Uh, they are looking at uh, constructing a parking lot to act as um, additional you know, parking area for their business uh, located directly adjacent to this parcel. Um, as such, uh, any standalone parking lot that's not directly associated with a, another principal use does require a conditional use. Uh, so they are bringing forward this conditional use permit uh, in order to uh, construct a fairly large uh, parking lot. Um, on just a portion of this parcel, uh, some of these maps, you can see that the parcel does extend uh, further back, uh, but they are looking to just use the front portion uh, for this parking lot. Um, no additional uh, development plans have been provided if they plan to use the rest of it. Um, but of course, if they do plan to maybe extend the parking lot or do any substantial changes to it, it will be brought, be brought, re brought back forward. Uh, for another conditional use. Um, as such, they could also add a different principal use or combine lots or do a variety of other things. Um, but at the moment, they're looking to keep the parcel as is and just do a parking lot. Okay. At this time, then, we'll take testimony in favor of uh, the conditional use permit. Uh, again, if you would like to give testimony step up to the podium, give your name and address for the record, uh, and limit your time to three minutes or less. Thank you very much, Scott Fable, owner of Fable Lease. Uh, my home address is N1069 North Road in Hortonville. Um, I just wanted to state that this is uh, additional parking um, for my uh, truck repair business that's adjacent, um, which is to the east of this property um, and that's what we're trying to do is the um, local um, businesses that are getting their vehicles repaired at my shop are needing more parking as well as my business around the property um, because when the vehicles are all coming to the shop we just don't have enough room for our customers right now so we're just looking to add more space thanks scott <clears throat> Anybody else that would like to give testimony in favor of? Any testimony in opposition? Any testimony in opposition? All right, uh, declare this hearing closed at uh, 431. Next up, uh, this is has to do with zoning changes, and uh, we can take all these together. Is that right? Correct. They're all, all under the same ordinance. Okay. So these are zoning changes for... Godfrey Drive and South Industrial Drive properties, which include uh, Fox Valley Technical College, uh, Carousel Gymnastics, uh, Mobility for Vets Wheelchair, and uh, MCP Development, LLC. Here. Thank you very much. Um, so I have the exhibit here up on the screen. It can be found on page 459. Uh, so this, again, uh, similar to the sunny day conditional use. Uh, we're back here again in our River North uh, potential development area uh, where we took a look at a lot of the surrounding zoning districts and discovered that they were not in compliance uh, with our zoning code and the land use that was occurring. Um, so the city having already made change, making changes out in this area, uh, we felt it necessary to take on and kind of 
look at cleaning up these properties, making sure the properties were zoned properly and that they can continue their business uh, without any issues going into the future um, as they would be under acting under a non-conforming use uh, as it currently stands. So going through, looking at the parcels, we had already went through kind of a phase one. Um, this is the phase two and final phase of us kind of taking on this job. And uh, this would involve the four properties, as the mayor had mentioned, um, switching them from I-2 to more of a commercial use uh, that would better accommodate things such as the technical college, uh, gymnastic studio, offices, um, and the just indoor service um, related land uses. So again, just uh, I guess classified as, as more of a cleanup again, um, something that the city has taken on in phase two of the cleanup. All right. So at this time, then we would take uh, testimony in favor of uh, the zoning change. Anybody would like to give testimony in favor, step up to the podium, uh, give your name and address, and discussion three minutes or less. Any testimony in favor? Yes, sir. Yeah, can you? We need you at a microphone, but we can move the chairs right here and you can wheel right up straight there. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Ken Torville. I'm with uh, Mobility for Vets Wheelchair Shop. I am a vice president, not a board of directors. The, uh, I just have two questions. Uh, the reason for the change, and number two, what would that do to our tax assessment? Uh, sounds like they're downgrading the use of the land, and does that transfer into reassessing the value of that property? Uh, so, Ken, thank you uh, for coming tonight, and thank you for those questions. But uh, let me just explain. So this is a public hearing, so this is just for you to give testimony. Okay. Uh, and we are going to have a, a regular City Planning Commission meeting right after this. So if the commissioners choose to ask you questions at that time, you certainly have the right to answer those questions. Okay. At that time, but right now, this is just for uh, you to give testimony. Okay. All right. Apologize that for that. No, nope, that's okay. I, I I'm surprised it didn't happen already tonight. <laughs> so you can stay right there if you want, because we'll be going in. So that is the last uh, public hearing. Oh, I didn't finish, did I? Do we have any testimony in opposition? Any testimony in opposition? Hearing none, I'll close that hearing at uh, 4.35 p.m. All right, uh, let's go right to our City Planning Commission meeting uh, that uh, we have planned for tonight. Uh, Welcome everybody to our, our our special city planning commission meeting. It's Monday, July 18th, and it is uh, 4:36 p.m. I'll call this meeting to order. In attendance for commissioners, we have uh, Ivan Wayne, Mayor Brian Smith, Justin uh, Barons, our public works director, Pat Fair, and Henry Velliker, and then we're staffing it up, of course, with uh, Jarrett Rakew. Uh, you have a uh, agenda in your packet uh, that you received, uh, we would just need a, a motion to approve uh, that agenda. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. We have a motion by Ivan, second by Pat, that we approve the agenda <clears throat> as printed. Discussion, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Again, say no. Motion carried. You have a couple of minutes uh, from our June 1st meeting. Uh, and again, we just like to vote, uh, approve those and place them on file. 
Uh, so this gives you the opportunity if you see anything that you feel needs to be corrected or or discussed uh, again, we can we can have that discussion right now. If not, we would be just looking for a motion to approve the uh, June first public hearing meeting minutes and then also the regular meeting that was held on June first. So move for approval. Second. Motion by Pat. Second by Ivan that we. Uh, approve the minutes of the two meetings that were held in June. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Again, say no. Motion carried. All right, going to action items then. And, and the first bunch on here just has to do with the conditional use permits that we had and the, and the zoning changes. So our first uh, conditional use permit uh, was for the Wapaka Historical Society, which is at 525 Oak Street. And I know we've all heard this, but Jared, you want to just give us a real uh, brief description again of what this conditional use permit is. Of course. Uh, the staff report for this starts on page 10 of your regular meeting packet. Um, the property was originally zoned R1, which does accommodate uh, museums and galleries land use. Um, the uh, Wapaka Historical Society approached the city looking to um, complete their signage uh, rebrand that they did across all of their properties um, and realized that signage is not allowed or the ground signs that they were looking for were not allowed in the R1 district. Um, as such, um, not having the land use change at all, uh, we are looking to rezone the property to more of that commercial use, which... Um, Again, with this being that museum and galleries, uh, better fits in a commercial district, um, but also allows them to have signage. So they uh, rezoned to this new district, and as part of the finishing up of the process of that rezone, uh, they needed to come back through and get a conditional use, uh, so that way everything was compliant. All right. Just to clean up, basically, on that property. So uh, anybody have any questions? But I'd like to make a motion to approve this uh, conditional use permit as recommended by staff. So moved. Second. Motion by Henry, second by Ivan, that we approve this conditional use permit for Opaca Historical Society. Any other discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Again, say no. Motion carried. Next one is the conditional use permit for... Sunny day childcare in preschool. Again, Jared, if you want to just give us a brief uh, description of this. Of course. This uh, staff report starts on page 19 of your packet. Uh, this is for 1932 Godfrey Drive, Sunny day childcare in preschool. Uh, again, a cleanup. So we went through in phase one and rezoned uh, properties in order to um, bring them into compliance. Um, you know, sunny day child care was a non-conforming use in the I-2 district. Um, so by rezoning them, uh, we brought them into compliance into a proper zoning district commercial, which better fit their land use, it better fit the surrounding area. Um, and that would be similar to all of the rezones that we're looking at in this area. Um, and then with that, they needed to come through for a conditional use request to finish cleaning up that rezone process. Um, as the child care, um, child care over, I believe it is, eight children uh, requires a conditional use uh, throughout the commercial districts. Um, and with them being in B3, they are in that district and require a conditional use. Okay. Thanks, Stuart. Anybody have any questions on that? <laughs> Again, uh, Staff is recommending that we approve uh, this conditional use permit for sunny day child care. So move for approval. Second. Motion by Pat, second by Ivan, that we approve uh, the conditional use permit for sunny day child care. Any? And I guess as a thing, uh, both of these will go to council, conditional use. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. All conditional so. use permits. Um, so, so move for approval uh, to be taken up at the next council meeting. Thanks, Jared, for that clarification. Any other discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Again, say no. Motion carried. I'm wondering if... Uh,
anybody have any objections if we if we go to the conditional use permit for table ease just go from b to e here real quick i think that'd be a good yeah. idea you guys okay with that yeah okay so the next one is a conditional use permit for fable ease llc at 251 grand seasons drive Garrett, you want to just explain here of course, this one starts on page 146 of your packet. Uh, this conditional use is accompanied by a site plan review following this agenda item here we're discussing. Um, so Scott Fable, the owner of Fable East, uh, Fable East is actually directly to the uh, southeast of this parcel or south. Um, he owns a trucking business and he would like to expand uh, parking on his uh, parking for his business um, directly on the parcel adjacent to his current site um, as his current site is not enough to service his customers. Um, he recently added an addition um, onto his current site uh, that houses his principal use of the trucking repair and service, um, which adds a significant quantity of bays and, and other um, services. So he's looking to expand and add a uh, parking lot area on an adjacent parcel so that he can have additional space to uh, store vehicles short term uh, while they're p maybe waiting to be picked up or waiting to be repaired. Thanks, Jared. Anybody have any questions on this conditional <coughs> use permit? Against? Uh, yeah. You, um, uh, I'll make a motion and then we'll get into discussion phase. Sure. Thank you. Pete. I'll make a motion that we approve. Uh, is this need to be recommended to Jared? It does. Uh, and recommend to council for approval. Motion by Pat, second by Henry, that we uh, approve this conditional use permit discussion. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Against, say no. Motion carried. I, I'm guessing your question has to do with the site plan, to tell you the truth, right, Scott? Yes. And that's what's up next right now. Okay. So, site plan review for Fable Ease. Here. Of course. Uh, so, this one starts on page... Uh, 293 of your packet. Uh, the site plan review uh, does go in more in depth on the parking structure that's being proposed uh, or parking lot area that's being proposed. It is a fairly large area. Um, we did have to have this reviewed by our uh, contracted, excuse me, engineers, Strand and Associates. Uh, they did go through, uh, they did the, um, the review of um, the erosion control, stormwater uh, site, et cetera, and provided comments to us. Uh, these can be found on page 303 of your packets. Um, as you continue down onto 306, it does show um, more a better picture of what they are proposing. Um, a large, uh, large parking area with a rolling gate um, that has a access uh, to the site to the southeast um, so that trucks can go in and out and they don't have to enter the roadway. Um, landscaping has been proposed. There's a rolling gate that has been proposed. Um, a couple of the, um, I guess the site plan does have a somewhat laundry list of recommendations or just uh, Conditions with it, um, some of these have been provided by Strand that recommended uh, these conditions uh, to double check. Um, some of them include uh, an adjacent business also owned by Fabelis, uh, 270, 282, uh, Grand Seasons Drive, just making sure everything stays compliant with that property. Any permits needed uh, will be gained by the city. Um, and this font is, I don't know why. Uh, no trees shall be removed unless uh, the City of Opaco Department of Public Works okays it. Um, you know, developing the site in a manner that is organized, that it doesn't become, I guess, for lack of better terms, a junkyard. Um, any changes in this require a site plan. Uh, all exterior lighting uh, shall be, you know, downward facing into the lot, not glaring in properties or in... Uh, adjacent properties or roadways. 
Uh, it shall be required that this parking area is paved and dust free and properly drained. So pavement will be required for the parking area, driveways and entrances. Um, just read through these. Um, one specifically recommended by Strand. Um, they felt as though it somewhat fit the definition of a drop yard. Um, although we felt it was, it could be considered that, that that was not the true intention by Fabelis. Uh, we did put it in there that it should never be become that or you know get to that point um but again under our assumption that that is not what it's supposed to be uh more of a short term you know just storage for that business um erosion control practices shall be utilized in the development um cross cross access agreement for that roadway uh, that connects the uh, adjacent sites uh, they are owned by the same individual and that is understood by the city uh, but that should be in place just in case anything does ever sell um, or go to different businesses. Um, just should be recorded, uh, especially if the properties weren't combined to begin with. Um, any gates or fences need a uh, fence permit. Um, the applicant shall verify with the Wisconsin DNR that redevelopment classification is correct uh, for its lot and that all requirements of NR 151 have been maintained. Um, there was a little bit of concern uh, through our engineer, uh, the 40 versus 80. Um, what's TSS, Justin? Total su suspended solids. That's that's the acronym. Um, so total suspended solids, 40 versus 80. So 40% would be the uh, redevelopment and 80 would be a new development. So verify with DNR that that is correct and provide that to the city. Um, septic system, if that's remaining on, on site, uh, per Strand's recommendation, the septic cover shall remain or be made watertight, um, concrete flared and end treatments, rip wrap, rip wrap, or a mixture of both shall be utilized for any drainage pipes or ditch areas that will have concentrated flows. Um, any disturbed soil area shall be restored with vegetation within one year. Uh, so there's, so there's not any bare dirt. Um, and then any any amendments or anything like that should be resubmitted to the city if need be. Um, so a variety of those were recommended by Strand, uh, which uh, city city staff, sorry, talking a lot today, um, felt it necessary that we do include. Um, they are fairly simple um, and ensure that neighboring properties are protected especially with such a vast, large concrete area or asphalt or hard surfaced area. Um, so with that, I, I'll take any questions or uh, if, if uh, so, Mr. Fable. Thank you, Jared. Appreciate that. Uh, Scott, go ahead. Thank you very much. Um, currently right now, the uh, my intention was to clean up this property because it's the old go-kart track. And there are two buildings on that property that are abandoned, that are nasty. <laughs> and I want to take those down, which I'm going to do. But along the Grand Seasons Drive, there is currently on the property very large oak trees that are a buffer currently that are... Um, Jared and I saw the this tree line is there and initially we wanted to cut those trees down so that the property would look more attractive and then on that uh, one page of the site plan we have installing trees on the corners of the um, property so it would take a uh, going back those right there see along where those red trees are lined up now there's currently very large mature trees that um, are needing trimming and needing work. But um, the point of my discussion is this is like a dust barrier. And my worry is the, um, the agency you asked to look at this is now requiring me to pave this property. And that's um, gonna cost over a quarter of a million dollars to pave this and my initial um, application is for um, stone in this lot um, so I'm asking why I would I'm 
I'm going to have a difficult time putting this lot in if it's going to have to be paved because it's such a substantial investment in just the parking lot, which is a private parking lot. It's not public. It's not made for the public to go on this lot at all. And on the west side of the lot where Dwight Shannock has his business, that's all got blockage from trees, large mature trees there. And he has a gravel parking lot for his driveway. So does Blue Knight has a gravel parking lot for his driveway. Um, down at the mobile, they've got extended parking lot. Their parking truck's on, which is gravel. So I'm trying to make this so that it's not um, inconducive to doing a parking lot here by the cost. And that's why I'm just asking to leave it the way I've tried to get it um, approved on the site plan, which would be gravel. On the west side, you see there's a concrete pad there. That would be to park trailers for our customers that are dropping off like MPD and many of the customers in the industrial park drop off trailers that we repair and then they come and pick them up. We want to put that pad in there so trailers wouldn't, you know, fall down into the gravel and have a problem getting them out. Um, but the lot being totally blacktopped actually can sometimes be difficult for vehicles that are parked there and, and sinking. Right now in my other business, I have a large parking lot that's blacktop, and when you park vehicles on them, especially like today, and it's 90 degrees out, they just start sinking in the blacktop. And it would create such tremendous maintenance on that blacktop going forward that it's just a parking lot in a field. And I, I really can't afford to blacktop at all. Okay. Uh, thanks, God. Yep. Uh, Jerry, you want to address that? Yeah. So um, that was the recommendation of our um, engineer. That is something we have been requiring all other businesses to do as well. Um, so a lot of the ones you have mentioned, they are older businesses. Um, we require all of the new, or I'm sorry, older developments. We require all the new developments to be paved. Uh, so places such as um, uh, Clintonville Lumber, like up in the uh, industrial park over by the airport, uh, we did require them to pay for their parking as well. Um, you know, any any large parking areas, the, the really the goal is to ensure that it is, um, you know, paved, dust-free, uh, properly drained. You know, we feel the um, the hard surface allows for easier drainage uh, and to concentrate the flow to certain areas. Um, yeah, I guess something, if, if that were to be considered, I guess my recommendation would be to probably postpone and check with the engineer um, on the pros and cons in their viewpoint. Go ahead, Henry. Did the DNR weigh in on, on paving versus gravel? I do have the DNR permit that just arrived. They have approved it, so I have okay. a DNR permit now for it. I do not know if the DNR um, specifically commented on gravel versus pavement. So can I can I ask then the permit? I'm sorry, the approved permit that you're talking about that you just received. Did the DNR know at that when they reviewed it that you were using gravel? Yes. That was the application. God, I'm, I'm really sorry. Can yeah, you, just, you need to just yeah. use the I'm mic. I'm sorry. Yeah. Back in June when we put in the application, all the applications were strictly for gravel. None of my applications were ever for any paving. This has just been added. Okay, so their approval, meaning the DNR, yes. was the understanding that it would have been a gravel parking lot. Correct. Thank you. So the, the city does not have an ordinance that would require him to pave this the city has an ordinance that specifically states that all all parking and loading areas shall be designed to be dust free and properly drained um, I believe that is the exact wording of our ordinance um, in which the I guess the, the intent is to have it paved um, with some leeway of course so if this is felt that that could be a leeway uh, case, then it could be approved to be gravel. Um, 
again, with, with it being such a large parking area, I don't know um, the pros and cons to that. Uh, Can I so comment on that? Talking with the engineer. Who, who's talking? I'm sorry. Scott. Can I comment sorry. on the... Uh, Hold on a second, Scott. Hey, let, let me stay under control yeah. here. I had a question. Yeah, Justin, go ahead. So the, the use is for storage? Outdoor, stor outdoor storage, excuse me? It's not called storage. It's when customers bring their vehicles in, our yard is full right now. We don't have any more parking for our, any of the customers to drop off vehicles for us. So it's just a yard. They're going to drop their customers. We're going to go and pick, bring them into the shop, repair them, and then have them parked back out there. And who does the parking? You do the parking or the customer? Our employees, yes. It's a combination because customers would come, drop off their vehicle, and or drop off a trailer there, and then we go and grab it, bring it into the shop, repair it, and then take it back out there. Let me let me ask you a couple of questions, Scott. Sure. Uh, one, there are fifteen conditions, and and one of the conditions is the paving of that. Did you have any other issues with any of the other fourteen conditions? All I want to ask is if I leave all the trees where they are and not take any down, do I need to plant those? Okay. Can you answer that? Uh, so I guess whatever was submitted on your landscaping plan would be what would be a, being approved. That's what was reviewed. So originally your plan was to take them down and put new ones in? Correct. And now you're thinking that you would prefer to keep... The trees that are there. These would be a much better dust barrier than me taking them all down. That's what I'm saying is that this would be a perfect dust barrier if that seems to be the issue because these are very large mature trees that are all together and cover a big portion of the front of that property. Okay. So okay. I wanted to cut them down and clean it up and then put, you know, the trees on the outside where we're talking about here. Sure. So... So there, of the 15 conditions now, there's two conditions that you uh, you need further discussion on with Jarrett. Are there any others? No. Okay, just those two? Yes. Okay, and what's your urgency? Uh, well, <laughs> we would like to get going tomorrow on this property. We, you know, Mathwig uh, is the excavator, and he's been on the schedule for this. So I'm, I'm hoping it can be soon. Okay. So our next city planning commission meeting is actually August third. Okay, mm -hmm. I, I'm inclined to uh, allow. Jarrett, the opportunity to to do a little bit more research on this. That would be fine. Yeah. So, and, uh, so because site plan can be approved here, right? Well, sir, we wouldn't have to go to the next council meeting. We could get the approval. So yeah, 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 that's fine. Yeah. Could, so it's if what what Henry is saying, just so you understand too, most of the things that we do at city planning have to are just recommended to city council. So then you have to wait for the next city council meeting. But since this is a site plan review, it, it ends here. So we would be able to give you that the, on the third, we would be able to tell you yes or no. Okay. All right. Does that make sense? Henry. Yeah, go ahead. Well, I'm wondering if the applicant, I, I mean, I don't know where the plan commission is on this, but there's some kind of phasing. I mean, he's making a big investment here to allow the, you know, the, you know, to work it in into his business, and, and is there some kind of maybe middle ground we can find? So, you what know, you're what maybe phasing. I'm trying to read what you're saying. You're saying that uh, the ultimate the ultimate plan would be for him to pave it sometime in the future, but maybe allow him to just phase it in over time. Or with Jared's uh, and working with Justin, figuring out. Maybe to reduce the area that needs to be paved. Maybe most of the dust, if you think about it, is coming in. I I, I don't know, but you yeah. know what I'm saying. Maybe there's a well and middle ground here somewhere. I I, I think there is, um, but I think we want to give Jared mm -hmm. and Justin the opportunity to, to 
to meet with Scott and, and just uh, figure it out. <laughs> Go ahead. So on the two sticking points, the trees, I would be all in favor of saving the mature trees. As long as it's a one-on-one, -on -one, um, we'd have to evaluate those clumps. I mean, it doesn't look aerial compared to that. looks a little different, so that would have to be evaluated. I think if you left the trees that are there, you're going to have to alter the dimension of your parking lot, so that would have to be considered. And then as far as paving versus gravel, um, if this is considered a parking lot, I, I, in the past we've always considered it should be paved. If this is going to be storage, I think we've made some exceptions to outdoor storage, allowing that to be gravel. So that's just food for thought as we work through these things. Yeah, so, go so oh, go ahead. Right. Yeah, one last question, sir. How many um, of your customers are typical are like cars versus trucks? None. They're all trucks. They're all, all trucks. Tra heavy all trucks. equipment. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I was just going to say, could uh, could we make a, a recommendation that um, we, if, if we were to approve, with the understanding that the two sticking points would be worked out in house with Jared and Justin, if necessary. You know, and I thought about that too, but I, in this case, I mean, we are really setting a precedent here. Yep. And I really okay. think they need to have the opportunity to, to make sure that they are on board with this. Okay. Yeah. So, so w w are you thinking that we would be wise then to just um, uh, table this until uh, next? The, well, actually, the fourth is that when we are meeting third. again? Yeah, the third. That, that's only three weeks. Yeah. Is that two weeks? Two weeks, almost. Um, yeah. Um, and then, and then by then have a final answer. Yes. Yeah. And then they could certainly work with Mr. Fable on getting some, some hopefully some like Henry suggested, maybe some kind of an agreement. And you sounded like you were okay with that, Scott. Sure. I'm pretty easy to go, I'm pretty easy to work with. Yeah. yeah. I just have to watch out for the cost of the for the business sake. Right. It's uh, it's a it's gonna it's a very large undertaking just with the gravel. Throw black topping on top of that gravel, and it's it's a very very expensive piece of property just sitting there with black top on it. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, Jared, maybe in your discussion with uh, Strand and the corp and 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 uh, uh, engineering, that they might have some suggested suggestions that we haven't even really talked about that could mitigate some of the costs uh, with some kind of a material. Who knows? And keep the dust down and too, keep it maybe. Down. Yeah. yeah. Who knows? Yeah. I did want to make a comment about um, the erosion control plan, um, which is just above this, and uh, the flow of the water from the property right here shows where the water flow would go to and Davil Engineering um, did a lot to make sure that it is swelling towards the back of the property and um, underneath that dry we're, we're proposing our driveway there well we have under there's underneath that driveway would be drainage to the back of the property which is all woods back there yeah, we're listening, Scott. Sorry. Okay. Uh, so, so actually, it it uh, on the back side of the property, and I, on the back side of the property is is uh, just uh, vacant. It's all woods, just, just vacant, woods, sitting right? there. Yeah. yeah. Great deer hunting property. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Yeah, and Jared. So you're okay with this, Justin, you're okay with this, Scott, you're okay. So I, I guess I would just ask for a motion to table this till our August 3rd meeting. I'd make a motion to table this request until our August 3rd meeting. Second. Motion by Henry, second by Ivan, that we table this till August 3rd. And uh, Jared will be in contact with you, Scott. Thank you. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Against? Motion carried. All right, we'll see you at August 3rd. All right, let's go back then. I'm, I'm sorry. I was thinking I was speeding things up, and I didn't. Um, all right, so let's go back to the conditional. So, again, we have two things here. We have a conditional use permit 
and we have a site plan review for for this next one too this is a conditional use permit uh, we'll take that first conditional use permit for Mount Tom LLC Jared, you want to just go through this quick again yeah of course uh, so Mount Tom LLC uh, Harmony Towers submitted an application uh, for a new mobile tower um, on a parcel off of Bailey Street it is unaddressed at the moment uh, addressing usually occurs after the development is approved um, so the site was sectioned off from a larger chunk of land um, for the purpose of putting a mobile tower on it um, the sectioning off has been approved uh, but up for the decision tonight is the site plan and conditional use um, there are a variety of materials um, throughout the application there have also been some public comment that was submitted earlier today that I did forward on to the plan commission um, but happy to take any questions past that otherwise again um, there are representatives from um, an opposing company as well as the applicant uh, that can answer questions as well if need be okay. uh, thank you Jared so I was just rereading uh, Attorney Sorensen's email to us we are talking here uh, so uh, I know that uh, and you guys have all, commissioners you've all received that those emails also today actually uh, our our attorney uh, Steve Sorensen uh, is telling us that we you know basically have uh, three options here we can approve we can deny and we can table this now we do have an issue with time uh, we uh, <coughs> the request uh, was made and you have to you have to uh, act on that within 90 days and we feel that those 90 days now would lead us to September 1st so if you so, so choose to table it tonight and and we'll talk about why that might be a good idea uh, we would have till September 1st and so that would be well within our August 3rd uh, uh, city next City Planning Commission meeting uh, this is a uh, conditional use permit so it would have to go to City Council so that then would go to the City Council meeting on on August 16th uh, if we were to take this up on August 3rd and uh, so <clears throat> I'm just talking from a standpoint of a commission itself you guys could certainly and probably do have questions of, of both groups here tonight but uh, we we obviously want to get a little bit more help from our city attorney and we would like to see our city attorney in attendance at this meeting we have attorneys on both sides here so I always think uh, you know if you have attorneys we need attorneys uh, and uh, so that would be the reason that I would actually recommend tonight that we table this and bring it back to our August 3rd meeting with the opportunity for Steve to have a little bit more discussions with both sides SBA and uh, and uh, is it Harmony Harmony Towers or is it Mount Tom LLC that we're um, Harmony Towers would be the uh, Harmony Towers. So he would have the ability to to discuss this with them a little bit more. Uh, yeah, hold on, hold on. <laughs> so I at this time I would really like the commissioners, if you have any questions of what's going on tonight, to have the opportunity to either ask Jarrett. Uh, from our city standpoint or if you would like to talk to Harmony uh, which is uh, Jonathan and Michael or if you would like to talk to SBA which is being represented by Claude uh, any any questions and then I'll give you guys some opportunities mm -hmm. to, to ask some questions also okay. um, Brian I just have just a question on the process I'm just kind of going back and, and I um, uh, apologize for having to step out for a minute so you're, you're suggesting if we table it today and then bring it back to City Planning Commission on the 4th? On the, yeah, we'll on, be on the, 
It would be on the 3rd, but third, yeah. On 3rd. And then yeah. at that meeting, we would have uh, our city attorney would be present. And then we would kind of listen again to the arguments on either side and then make a recommendation on the 3rd to go to council. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Just to gunk things up, uh, really the conditional use permit is really the first step. Right, because that needs to be approved to take to deal with the site plan. But the site plan could be approved by us. So it gets a little goofy just so the commission knows it, right? Right. So we could be in a scenario where we approve it. Council's got to approve the conditional use permit, but we might have already approved the site plan, and then council could maybe not approve the conditional use permit. So it's yeah. a little goofy. Yeah. I right in my mind, so I just want to make no, sure I'm understanding point. that. It is a good point, and, and I, I, my question back, and Henry, I could either hit you or Jared with this, but, <laughs> uh, I mean, can you approve the conditional or the site plan review uh, contingent upon the conditional Perfect. use being yeah. approved? I think you probably think Council's could. done that before. Yeah. yeah. And commissions, yeah. yeah. Okay. So that'd be how to we, handle that. I All think right. we could handle that. Yeah. So are you taking questions, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Go ahead. Um, Jared, did you get any comments? The the neighbors were notified of this, correct? Correct. Did you get any comments directly from neighbors about it? There were not any comments directly regarding this topic or the public hearing and, notice. And no out. neighbors or no residents. Okay. No residents. Um. I'm curious if both uh, SBA and Harmony understand that the 90 days is September 1. So, you know, maybe you guys could just move up here yeah. and sit, and then you'll be in front of the microphone. The reason we want you to use a microphone is that we do video all this, and we want to make sure we get you on. So I'll, I'm going to comment on that first because I, I did take that into account. I okay. checked with Steve uh, Sorensen, our attorney, right away just on what the timing, because if that's, you know, depending on that, the tabling may not even be. Um, so in his response, um, and I apologize, Mayor, I could have corrected you. So in his response, we discussed the whole sequence of events that occurred. So on, um, on 5-17-2022, the applicant fully submitted the application, which included all of the signed applications, all of the paperwork that we would need uh, to move forward with such a meeting. Of course, it does leave some leeway if they submitted a few other things after that. It's fine. But really, the, the primary things are the signed fully applications, completely done uh, and good to go. Um, so that was done on 5-17-2022. Uh, so this was placed on the 6-1-2022 Planned Commission meeting agenda. Um, prior to that date, on 5-31-2022, uh, it was requested that this item be postponed uh, due to the applicants not being able to make the meeting. Uh, so per our conversation with Steve or per Steve's recommendation, because that was agreed upon and requested to be postponed on 5-31, that essentially is an agreement of, hey, you know, we are we are postponing the action that was originally going to happen on 6-1. Um, this is our agreement to extend that deadline. Uh, so essentially the, the extension would start over on that 5-31-2022, uh, which would bring us to 90 days would be approximately... I apologize. I had this calendar up and it went away on me. 531 It'd be approximately August 29th. It would be 90 days from that date. Um, so that is where the tabling came in to play uh, Attorney Steve Sorensen's uh, recommendation that that would be the 90 days uh, as the postponement um, would be that, that new agreement. Which would be September 1st? Uh, no, it'd be August 29th. The Because um, okay. it was confirmed that they would be on the today's agenda on 6-3, so that's where the September 1st, um, but you'd have to back it up the, the three days, so August 29th, I say. 
would be that 90 day mark if my okay. math is correct give or, give or take a day okay well so either way uh so if you, that's the case then we would get the goal would be to have it to council on the 16th of right. august which would be within that 90 day correct so your question was and but and yeah i guess i just the parties yeah. understand we've got luxury of a couple of weeks here to get a decision on this and everybody's cool with that right uh, i'm okay with that i would like to hear from harmony that they agree that the deadline is august 29th okay. and i guess the the reason why we got to the may 17th full application deadline was because the lease the fully signed lease required for the application was not submitted uh so the applications the for the site plan and conditional use were not fully submitted Okay. Um, so the they were not signed and dated for us. Okay. Um, so we needed a signed and date application uh, for that, um, and then once we had that, we considered that that full application um, with the accompanying uh, elements, such as the site plan uh, letters, uh, all of the other technical attachments that I don't remember the exact names of, but yes. We would agree that the extension proposed would be within the 90 days then. Okay. So we're all looking at August 29th, which is, okay. As the deadline and as our code states, if it is not approved or a decision is not, not has, I'm sorry, if a decision has not been met, it is approved by default. Got it. Could I ask this question? Uh, if there's a, another plan commission meeting on August 3rd. We'd have an opportunity to talk again, but I, I presume at the town board, or excuse me, the city council meeting on, on the 16th, there's no opportunity for public comment. Is that right? Well, normally we do not allow discussion at city council meetings. Uh, because we feel like this is a recommendation coming from City Planning Commission. And so they've heard all that information, and council members have had the opportunity to, to view that. But we have made exceptions. So my short answer is, you're right. <laughs> you know, my long answer is, is that if we feel like we didn't get enough information at City Planning, we would ask. Okay. But I would... I would strongly suggest that you attend. Well, and I city um, council. I can attend on August third. I'll have to send someone else on August sixteenth. Is, is okay. where I'm coming from, uh, which I can do. But I would prefer to be here myself. But if it's an if there's no opportunity to speak, then I'll just send someone to observe. Sure. Well, I think I think, and just if I could just say, and um, Eric isn't here tonight, uh, who's normally on our committee, but. Um, the the uh, council people have will do a lot of discussion or could do a lot of discussion based upon the the minutes that we're listening to tonight and maybe another meeting and that's why the mayor is suggesting that generally speaking the council will do most of the mm -hmm. discussing but as he's also suggested and it's happened more often than not um if somebody uh, has a question that nobody on the council can answer, but somebody in the audience, then it may be possible for that person to speak. But to have a public discussion that night, generally speaking, doesn't okay. happen. So just so I can prepare, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring a colleague on the 3rd who will be prepared then to talk on the 16th if necessary. And so if I throw this at you on the 16th, Claude, I mean, we do allow people to attend remotely. Would that work for you? Yes, I could. Okay, so we could. Okay, if that would if, be helpful. If we need to. That would yeah. be helpful, yes. Sure. But I will be out of out of town. But sure. Henry, go ahead. Are, Chairman, are you are you allowing some discussion? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, I guess we have three criteria that we got to decide on. Uh, the one on economics and business. I don't feel very comfortable weighing in on that. I mean, how can we, <laughs> that would be for a court probably, evidence, you know, and all that stuff. So that's one we really, economics of it, or the two sides are going to be hard to justify. But to me, the technical one as a layman, 
the argument that we're just 100 feet away, yeah, you're a little bit further up altitude-wise, is going to have a huge improvement of coverage. Now, that's a technical thing. How do we check that? We're given that to be uh, truth, and I'm not suggesting uh, Mr. Dorn's not being truthful, but could we, like we do with Strand on these site plan reviews, is there uh, a wireless person that we could rely on not spend a ton of money on or not? I, I, to me, that's the technical piece that would help me make a decision. I, I just thought getting in the middle of your business dealings is, seems um, a tough one. Plus, I think you guys, AT&T, is at the very top of the SBA tower. Is that correct? You're not? Oh, uh, okay. No, the, the city of Opa. I guess we, the, the city of Opa <laughs> Online is. Okay. All right. Thank you. But that could, I just, could I just point out, we, we have submitted a letter from a, uh, um, a structural engineer indicating that the tower can be extended to, to, to 232 feet. We have submitted a letter uh, analyzing the, the uh, uh, RF coverage from an RF engineer indicating that there is negligible to no better coverage provided from the new site 100 feet away. So there, there you do have, um, like a jury, who, who may not be experts in, in, in certain things, you do have information from experts here, and uh, we're happy to, to supplement that if you feel it's necessary. Yeah, I, thank you. I, I, sorry, I just need to, to say that the, F, the ceiling for that area from FAA is 220. So there is no 232. So the FAA says 220 feet is as tall as you can build. Which, which means the elevation 100 feet away is a little higher that they can build at 225. So they would be getting their 225. Go ahead. And I'm sorry, Jared, did you have a comment? Or yeah, so, um, and again, the SBA did submit um, the stuff that I sent over today, no, so I don't I know that plan it. commissioners had a lot of time to sit and review mm -hmm. it, uh, as well as um, Harmony Towers mm -hmm. did send over a, I'm sorry, a prop map. propagation map or a propagation map that I sent over today that I don't think commissioners had a lot of time to review either. No, it, so. it was dated the 15th, but we just saw it today, right? Yeah. Um, I, I'm, I I'm, can I just follow up on what Henry said a little bit? Henry made some pretty good points. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of moving parts here. You brought up the fact that we already approved of a uh, tower, which is over near the Rose Garden, and and that hasn't been put up. Um, but again, we, we don't know Verizon's uh, business plan. Um, as Henry said, we, we, it's hard for us to get into the middle of some business dealings here. Um, but, but, but remember, Verizon's I, I, yeah, a tenant. Yeah, let me finish. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah, yeah let me finish. Okay. Um, but the point is we, we did approve that, and they may decide to put that up at some point. Um, my other question, and, and it came kind of as Henry alluded to a little bit. Who are you bit. asking the question of? I'm sorry. Well, I'm, I'm going to ask the question about AT&T. Okay. They, they basically, um, you, you made the, the uh, uh, statement that AT&T will save $2 million. Well, who gains from that $2 million savings? Well, as we all know in today's production chain, right, the hope is that costs flow down. I mean, we can... I, I don't work for AT&T. They are not my client. Harmony Towers is our client. In past board meetings, such as this, when we have been there, reps from AT&T have said, our hope is that those costs do flow down to the customers. But one thing that is for certain, if AT&T faces higher costs on their base lease for tower space, then they're going to have higher production costs, which will inevitably result in higher costs to customers. But, but again, I, I do not, I'm sorry, I don't work for AT&T, so... I but can't. there's no assurance that the savings of $2 million by AT&T will also be passed upon along to customers. And I myself can't give you those assurances. And Thank you. Well, and, and I, that's all customers. That's just, you know, it's just not a pack of customers. Exactly. Could I address those well, couple of points? <laughs> I, I, Jonathan's been waiting to talk, so I'm going to let him okay. first. Here. And respectfully, I'd just like to take a large step back for, the, for this moment. Um, We've been in dozens of hearings, such as this across the state with SBA and AT&T. Again, our client here is Harmony Towers. They are a tower company, one that's relatively new within the state. 
And unfortunately, what inevitably happens when Harmony goes to file an application to build a new tower to house not only AT&T, but other potential mobile service uh, providers, this particular tower can hold up to four. So there hopefully will be three other tenants in addition to AT&T. But sometimes what gets lost in the mix here is this relationship between <coughs> AT&T and SBA. And although that does bear an impact, I think, ultimately, uh, on what municipalities should consider. Um, here in this case, the applicant themselves is Harmony Towers. They're seeking to build a new tower, um, which uh, by local review complies with all local codes. Um, through our affidavit, which um, I can go into more detail if there's questions about that, uh, but that affidavit sets forth how the conditions for um, state requirements in issuing a permit for a new tower are also met. And so, you know, I, I hate to um, see these situations where unfortunately municipalities get brought into the mix almost and almost like they have the obligation of feeling like they need to be the arbiter of business decisions, which frankly is not what the ask is before this commission or the city. Um, it's simply, can we build a new tower based on current plans? And does that comply with both state and local law? And um, the last thing I'll mention, because you know, to Henry's, or excuse me, um, Commissioner Member Veliker's mm -hmm. point, um, uh, it's it's next to impossible for a municipality to actually evaluate the you know, the business impacts and the inner workings of this relationship because it's complicated, <laughs> and some of it is also confidential. Um, but at the end of the day, if SBA is really the only tower provider in this area, and other municipalities or any municipality is not willing to let new entrants into the market, then there's no incentive for SBA to try to negotiate better or more favorable terms. And, um, you know, it, unfortunately, um, the lease that was negotiated with SBA years ago um, is not currently recognized as market. And so that's why Harmony has emerged as a new tower provider and why providers like AT&T are interested in moving on to Harmony's facilities. Good. Anybody? Henry, I, 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 I have to I'm give sorry, uh, Claude a chance, but oh, do you have a question on what he just no, said? No, I just, I do have a couple kind okay. of, all some, right. Couple questions, so, but go ahead. I, so, kind go ahead. Of I've heard a couple of things here. Uh, Mr. Hagan indicated that um, uh, the tower near the Rose Garden, I guess you referred to it, um, was approved in 2019. That, too, is a tower to be built by a third-party developer, just like SBA, just like Harmony. These companies don't provide communication services themselves. They are the developers and owners and operators of towers, and they, their tenants are the AT&Ts and the Verizons and the T-Mobiles and, and the city of Wapaka of the world. So um, whether Verizon decides to, to go there or not, even though they were the initial applicant, Parallel could still build that tower. And Parallel could, could have a, a space available for AT&T. Parallel's got approval for it. As, we, as we've been hearing now, this is about the approval. So if at and my point is, if AT&T really wants to provide better coverage for the folks in and near Wapaka, they would invest their time and energy and money in another location that would expand their coverage area. They would not replicate their coverage 100 feet away from an existing site where they have been for over 20 years now. So Jonathan is, is a, a good guy. He's a friend of mine. We might have a beer after this if he's interested. Um, but he says, we don't want you to be the arbiter. But then he talks about the fact that, that you know, AT&T is going to save money on this site, and, and he thinks that SBA has a monopoly. It's not a monopoly. This is the statute, and this is your ordinance, which mimics the statute, which requires any applicant to demonstrate why they cannot co-locate. They've been co-located for the last 19 years. It's pretty hard for them to make an argument that they can't continue to co-locate on SBA's tower when they've been there for 19 years. As far as the economics, it's in writing from SBA. I'll say it on the record. SBA is willing to talk to and negotiate with 
AT&T about a lease amendment. We understand that their lease is coming up after 20 years. It's not unusual that business parties would talk about an amendment. We're willing to do that. We're not going to commit to a certain number here today, but we're willing to do that. Lastly, the question was, who gets the benefit of the $2 million? Please don't expect the citizens of Opaca to get a discount on their AT&T service if you approve this tower. It's not going to happen. That's not how these companies set their rates. Rates are set on a nationwide or regional basis for all subscribers. It doesn't matter whether they have this tower here and this tower there. So, so who gets the benefit? AT&T. And again, this goes back to the really the only case law that we have in the state uh, that's really on, right on point here. The fact that AT&T is going to save money and the fact that Harmony is going to make money is not a valid reason to ignore your zoning ordinances and the state law, which says co-location is king. But, but if they're at 179 and they're going up, I mean, I'm not a technical uh, wireless person, but you're higher, you're going to have better coverage. So it isn't, unless somebody can prove me otherwise, it isn't the same coverage. It'll but be if, more. But once again, we're willing to extend the height of the tower to accommodate them. <clears throat> Who sets, I'm sorry, Mayor, I'm just uh, dominating it here, but who sets this uh, search ring of one mile? Is that the FCC? Who, is that industry standard? Yeah, Why does it have to be one mile? Is that off of which? Well, you talk about a search ring of one mile, and there's not towers within the one mile search ring. Okay. Why is it one mile? And not two miles. That would be, <clears throat> I, I put that out there. The actual search ring that the amount of area that I was able to look at was, it wasn't a mile. It was. Well, you had some like at 1.3 miles. Like yeah, that was map. for me to, to yeah. show the city that there wasn't any other <clears throat> towers within that and area. That were, yeah, that were actually. That were on. viable. That were on. And then to yeah. speak to the other tower, he brought up Our the Verizon sure Tower. Are co-locating or not? I'm sorry. Was Go ahead. Keep going. Right sorry, we were having a sidebar, and that wasn't oh. fair. <laughs> so, go ahead. <laughs> no, to bring up to bring up the other Verizon tower, I want to back up. <clears throat> the reason I chose this location it was when I drove into town. My main job is what I do is I drive in, I go right to the tower. Okay, this is zero right here. And but as you're driving into Wapaka, I looked up and I saw the tower. I saw the water tank, and I thought. Yes, this is a good spot for a tower. And I came to the city first, and I said, hey, would you be interested in maybe leasing up an additional piece of land? Because we, like um, we would like to get off of the SBA tower for a variety of reasons. And it was, the city took the lease, and they, re -looked, and they looked at it. They had to turn and look at it, and they said, we're bound. We can't do it. So I still have the idea to take the city into consideration that this is a good spot for another tower gives the other carriers on the SBA tower opportunity to lessen the impact of the, that rent. Um, so I guess what I'm saying is there's, there's also other towers that connect. That's just not a, we're not just there and that's it. That tower that we're on now propagates to the surrounding towers that AT&T owns or, or leases. Um, so it's very important that we're close to the original tower. And that's, that's why I'm there. So there, there was a kind of a twofold reason for me is it's a good location for the city. It doesn't impact really the view shed too much. And uh, so that's, I just wanted to bring that point up. So we're okay with tabling it? Because I think we need our attorney here, right? Yeah, I, I just wanted them to yeah. give well, their... I think if we discuss it now or we discuss it on the 3rd, uh, we do have a couple commissioners that aren't here, so we're probably going to have to regurgitate <clears throat> some of this again. Well, but I also think that our discussion will be better uh, understood if we have representation from attorney sources. I mean, I think that's yes. what Justin is getting at. I, I just thought that you might have questions tonight that you know I didn't want you to just leave without 
having the opportunity to ask questions. And I'm sorry, you guys, that uh, you're going to have to attend multiple meetings, um, but like you said, you're probably used to this by now. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so I guess I would recommend at this time that we table this uh, conditional use permit uh, request until our August, uh, our next regular scheduled meeting, which is August 3rd. Mayor, are you suggesting on August 3rd we'd have a public hearing again? Uh, we don't need to have a, another public hearing, and I don't think we will because we'll give them Okay, so we'll the just have the discussion to... as part of the agenda. Yeah, okay. well, the public hearing came down to these two, and we're going to let them talk during the meeting anyway. So, okay. yeah, I don't think we need to. Okay. Yeah. So it would be a regular 515? It would be. We're, we're not going to do not that four, again. Yeah. 515 it is. It's not 4 or 515. It's 515. Uh, okay. Yeah, we don't usually meet at 4. We we had another meeting set for tonight, so we were trying to put this in in front of it, but, of course, that meeting got canceled. So. <laughs> I know, and I apologize. No, well, that's okay. We can I join the meeting. at 515 a month ago, thinking we always All right. meet at 515. So if you're okay, let's, let's get a motion to approve uh, uh, tabling this until... August 3rd. So moved. Second. Motion by Henry, second by Pat, that we uh, table this conditional use permit until August 3rd. And I just wanted to, uh, if you're writing down names, this, this is actually yep. Pat Ferry. Yeah. He's got the name tag of, of uh, somebody else. He's, so. These are council members. <laughs> and we're not this gentleman home. doesn't have a tag. He doesn't deserve one. Right uh, <laughs> <laughs> you always right. <laughs> yeah, he's over there, usually. There, there's a better looking Justin in the seat. All right. What did, did you say? Did we vote? Yeah. No, no, we didn't vote. Okay. All, right. all, in, all in favor, <laughs> signify by saying aye. 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 Again, say no. Motion right. carried. I, I hope you guys understand that, that, I mean, we all have opinions here, but um, we all know where this is going, so we want to make sure that, that we have all the information we need before we can really well, tell you what we that's think. That's prudent, and I'll be happy to see you again on August 3rd. All right. Sounds good. So does that mean, too, that we sh should we discuss the site plan review tonight, or should we just table that? It really seems to make yeah. sense that we would yeah. table that also, right? So moved. Yeah. A second. <laughs> Motion by Henry, second by Ivan, that we... We table the site plan review for the Mount Tom LLC or the Harmony Towers LLC. Let's see that. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Again, say no. Motion carried. All right, all right guys. Thank so thank you. Thank you, all. Thank you. Uh, yeah. 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 Jarrett will send you guys an agenda and we're not done yet. We'll send that out to you guys again. We'll also send a, a a remote. If if you can't attend the meetings, we'll we'll give you the opportunity to, to be here remotely. I would, I would like that for August. Sure, we'll we'll do that. I'm sorry, just to clarify, the third will be the planning commission continuation. Yes. Sixteenth will be the full full, full council. Full. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yep, that's absolutely. a nice place to go for a beer. If you want to go. <laughs> <laughs> Henry. <laughs> Remote the local economy. Uh, so third. Is Tiger open tonight? And they open Mondays? All right, you guys, we got more to go here, so if you don't mind. <clears throat> You're joining the committee. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, just keep talking. Don't worry about us. We're just trying to continue. Yeah, we need a sergeant of arms pretty soon. <laughs> yeah, we need armed security. <laughs> I know. That's yeah, too bad. but his questions. I answered one. So did you? That's okay. okay. All right. Uh, next up, we have. Uh, <laughs> this has to do with uh, zoning change uh, for. Godfrey Drive on and South Industrial Drive, which includes the Fox Valley Tech, Carousel Gymnastics, Mobility for Vets, Wheelchair Shop Incorporated, and then also MCP Development LLC. And Jerry, do you want to 
just explain again why we're doing this? Of course. So um, this one starts again on page 458. Uh, Taking a look at the River North development area, we realized that a lot of these parcels were zoned heavy industrial, uh, which does not fit in with their land use. Uh, typically, you don't like to see a daycare in the middle of a foundry you know, parcel, um, which is what I2 is meant for. Um, so with the surrounding area looking to move to residential or lighter commercial as well, uh, the city felt it, it would be best to uh, work with these businesses, get them back in compliance, um, so that they can continue without any issues. You know, they're the type of businesses we want to see there within this new development. Um, so we were looking to switch some of them. Um, I guess in, we're doing this in line with our future land use map. Uh, some of them would go to B4 and some of them would go to B3. Um, B4 would stay to the, towards the exterior of this area, um, you know, close to Highway 22 eg or entrance, egress, ingress, and close to Royalton egress, ingress from this um, southern industrial business park site. Um, so Fox Valley <laughs> Tech, Carousel Gymnastics, um, what is an office, uh, multi-tenant office building that houses uh, Fastenal, uh, used to uh, house a pause and clause animal, um, animal land use, and then uh, mobility for vets. Um, all of these would be switched in this round two. We had, I believe it was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven parcels go through in our first phase. Uh, and now this is the second phase kind of completing up this area. Um, and I guess to answer the question, so we're doing this again to bring those properties into compliance as well as to uh, prepare for a river north area as well as um, just... Um, yeah, I guess compliance and prepare for River North are the two ones. And we did it in line with our future land use map, uh, which was obviously approved by council and reviewed uh, during our comprehensive plan update. Um, so, so, sorry, I thought you were finished. So this is approved, then we recommend to council for two readings because it's a zoning change? Is that generally what happens? Correct. It should be two readings. Okay. And then property taxes. Um, zoning does not affect property taxes. Yeah, could we get back to that gentleman and just let him? Yeah, you know, I hate that he especially has. since he doesn't pay property taxes on a nonprofit building. Yeah, yeah, and, and those were quite. We actually, and to clarify, we did go out to each every single one of these businesses. Uh, they signed a document stating that they were okay with this. That's why we're moving forward with it. Uh, so we have that written approval from them, um, and actually, that's a question that all of them did ask. And we did respond in that same way that okay. zoning does not yeah. affect property taxes. But if he does reach out or, you know, what's he, I actually have to talk to him about a different issue. Um, I can mention that to him again and to let him know just so he has clarity on his questions. Yeah, his name was uh, Ken Torval. Did you write that down? Torval. Okay. You may have answered this already, Jared, so forgive me. But we're not creating any uh, non-conforming use with this change? No, we are eliminating them. Eliminating them. I'll yeah. make a recommendation to council that we approve the uh, zoning changes as presented. Second. Motion by Fair, second by Wayne, that we uh, recommend to council the zoning changes, which will be in an ordinance form number 14 2022. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Against, say no. Motion carried. Next up, resolution number, and again, this, these next two also get recommended to council, but uh, resolution number 1519, this is a resolution to di discontinue right-of-way located in the city of Opaqua. Yeah, so this one's, a, this one's a fun one. Uh, there's a great visual on page 556 of your packet. Uh, so this right-of-way vacation uh, did spark, you know, as we're continuing our, our Main Street project. Uh, the Danes Hall was looking to expand their outdoor area to include uh, additional seating, walking path, uh, just kind of bring their space outdoors. Uh, so as, as such, the uh, city felt as though that was a great opportunity uh, to continue just bettering our outdoor space, uses of Main Street, bringing people, people a little closer to Water Street uh, and that park that's up there. Um, so we were working with uh, Danes Hall and uh, their representatives, uh, Rettler Corp, 
I actually put this together and I believe was assisting them with their uh, yeah, CSM that they submitted. Um, so now this process is moving forward. Our, our initial step uh, is to vacate that right of way. Um, I do not remember the exact timeline for this, but I believe this after this is approved, um, we'd be approving yeah, the right of way vacation and then they would uh, record with the county and that right of way would then be vacated. Um, I believe they have to come back for a CSM yet. I think we approved it. I don't remember. Uh. So, but. Jared, so just answer, uh, and maybe it was in the notes and I didn't see it, but so it, w if and when the city vacates right away such as this one, what what happens to the property rights? Uh, property rights in which in like I mean, land, air, ground. Well, in term, well, or or ownership. Underground. Ownership. So it uh, will end up going to the Danes Hall. And the reason for that is, as opposed to just because it's already going through property that they own on both sides. Uh, so they're they're heading this this whole process. So it was their idea to come to the city, see if they would, if the city would be willing to vacate right of way. Uh, if so, how much, where, um, you know, they brought their, I think we, this almost started before I got here, but we told them to bring us forward a proposal, a visual that we can see. Otherwise nothing's going to ever get approved. Uh, they brought forward this visual that displayed, uh, you know, this is where the Danes hall kind of cuts off now where the Brown little building is. Um, and, you know, they said we want to expand the space, add to the sidewalk, um, you know, add some additional parking up on the top um, and just kind of improve the overall area at green space, which right now it's it's not being used for anything. Um, and it really doesn't access much uh, up to this up to the street, which I forget the name of it. But, um, yeah, so they brought it forward to us. We. Um, you know, we looked at it, we thought this was a, a good move on the city's part uh, and told them to continue down the path uh, towards this process. So the land would go to them. I I don't know if there's any payment for the land. I, I don't remember that offhand. I think that's part of the development agreement. Just that they develop this into it or that they pay? I don't know if there's a dollar amount. Yeah, I don't know either, but I, a couple things. When you when you vacate property, you know, I mean, if there was an owner on, let's say, two sides of that, then you would split it, split it down the middle or make it the normal lot line that's there. Um, but the other side, of course, is the city of Wapaka. And so, I mean, that's what made it so simple to just... Give yeah, all. give it to that. Tools. We've done this yeah. in the past. I mean, vacated some streets right. that were. I don't remember if there was ever any payment because of people's uh, lots extended out. No, like and any. and I guess now that you say that, because we're because we're vacating it, we're not selling them a piece of land. We're vacating it. We're giving up our. Again, both property owners are allowed to say you get fifty fifty. Us as one of the fifties are saying no, thank you, and then this property gets it all. Thank you for that. Just needed a spark. If I remember right, there's a, we have to have a public hearing on the vacation. It's a couple months. It's a confusing process. Yeah. It'll take a little time. Yeah, I, I mean, we had Steve Sorensen put together that timeline. I can look it up if you guys no would word. like. That's but. So, I mean, we're, I guess what we're doing here is we're okay with the city vacating the property and and we're okay with recommending to council that the property is vacated. I mean council has to ultimately make the decision here. Well, I'll make a motion then that resolution number 1519 be sent to council for approval. Second. Yeah, we got a motion by Pat, second by Henry that we approve resolution 1519. Any further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Again, say no. Motion carried. Uh, next up is uh, resolution number 1521. This is recommending an amendment to the City of Opaca Year 2030 Comprehensive Plan for, for the parcels that are listed there. Jared, you want to? 
tell us what that's about. Yes, this one starts on page 557 of your packet. Uh, this is in relation to the Foundry Plant 2 parcel. Um, so as as uh, as we're kind of going through the River North development, the WAPAC Foundry actually contacted the city and asked to be a part of a housing development as they were in desperate need of housing uh, for their employees. Um, you know, they need all forms of housing from, you know, they somewhere to house their temporary workers that stay from approximately three to six to a year uh, time frames, and then as well as uh, places to house full-time workers, maybe those temporaries that become full-time workers, uh, things like that. So uh, we did try to work with them on, you know, the temporary housing, you know, short-term lease kind of, um, you know, not short-term rental, but short-term lease um, multifamily development, and really wasn't sure how we could fit it into the River North, the field, the, the de type of development we're going for. Um, so the foundry came back and they proposed uh, putting a development that is close to their site, walking distance. They said a lot of these temporary workers don't have vehicles, uh, just as you know they're here to come do their job, you know, work the six months, uh, collect that you know as much of a paycheck as they can, and you know head back to their family. Um, so they propose right on site, right next to Plant Two, where a majority of these workers will be working or are currently working, um, and need some form of transportation. Why not cut the transportation out? Um, and add a housing development here. Uh, so as part of this, they, uh, the foundry came through with a certified survey map that now has been recorded uh, that has split this parcel into two. There's one larger chunk uh, to the north and then a smaller chunk that is right on the intersection of Royalton and Tower. Um, now to continue on with their process, as this split parcel is still zoned I-2, they need to go through the process and get it rezoned to a... Um, you know, parcel that would allow the multifamily uh, residential to be developed on it. Um, so they are looking to uh, change this um, parcel, I believe, to the neighborhood. Uh, let me just make sure I have that one mixed residential use correct. Um, adopted. should be the neighborhood mixed use, uh, which allows things such as uh, the higher uh, density residential, such as R3 zoning districts, uh, to B1, B3, um, and not B4. But those three just kind of give some variation um, and allows for some flexibility. Um, yep, neighborhood mixed use. Uh, the thought is to rezone this to a, I believe, B3 zoned parcel. Uh, which is a little bit higher commercial, but also allows the uh, multifamily residential. Uh, that way, again, if it ever ends up that, um, you know, temporary workers are not really needed anymore, uh, the site could always be redeveloped in the 10 to 15 years um, and sold off. So just a little bit more marketable as a already zoned commercial property, but still allows the foundry to do what they are looking to do. That's right there. Happy to take any questions. Yeah, and, and I think it was it. I know it's only a month and a half ago, but the foundry was at. Was, they were at city planning, right? Yeah, they came and here. And so we we have a good idea of what's going on here. Yeah. And so this is just really changing the the comprehensive plan so that it it meets uh, the city's plan. I'll make a motion to um, again. Um, um, <coughs> recommend to council resolution number 1521. Second. For approval. Motion by Pat, second by Ivan, that we approve uh, resolution number 1521. Any further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Again, say no. <coughs> Motion carried. Thanks for that, Jarrett. Let's go down to uh, your reports, uh, we have the internal site plan review report, the June 2022 permit report, the code enforcement status reports, and then the development updates. Yeah, uh, I'll mainly go through the internal site plan report here. Uh, it has slowed down a little bit, which um, I am thankful for. I'm sure many of you are aware. Uh, Elizabeth did accept, Elizabeth Racine, our building inspector, did accept another position. Um, 
So trying to keep up on and assist our building inspection department as much as I can. Um, so the little bit of a lag in uh, internal site plan reports has been a blessing in disguise. <laughs> um, it can pick up once we're back to full staff. That's not a problem. Uh, but a couple new single-family homes, uh, Little Wolf Auto, uh, conditional use amendment was, was approved uh, by plan commission, but just they were adding a couple bays, so we just did internal uh, to keep... Uh, keep that easy a um, couple change of uses coming forward um, in the works they'll need they'll need a little bit of work uh, just given their use and what buildings they're going into um, but I'm I'm hopeful we can get those sorted out and keep those businesses businesses in there um, in terms of the permits issued again permits are staying very consistent there's a lot of permits that are coming in um, you know we do have the Home repair program, which we did um, approve a second batch at CDA, uh, which kind of completes out this year's funding uh, that we have for it. Um, we do not have them marked in here. Um, that is uh, something uh, Commissioner Velker uh, brought up, um, and it's something certainly that I had noted and I was going to bring to the August Plan Commission just for your viewing uh, to show all of the permits that were approved. Um, just in an Excel spreadsheet, find a format to, sh to show. Um, and in terms of code enforcement, um, it has been fairly minimal. Again, just trying to keep up on the grass mowing, uh, the ones we're getting some complaints on. Um, you know, we do have an ordinance that states it can be 12 inches. Uh, if it really gets to 12 inches, that's, uh, that's somewhat of a problem. Most communities are like 6 to 8 inches. Um, so having something that's double to that, you know, if we're getting lawns that are to that point, uh, it's really something that the city just goes out and takes care of, uh, that, you know, two, three, possibly even four weeks have passed since it's been mowed, um, and not something we want to see in our community. So, um, that's not really noted on here just cause we are just, as we get them in, we have the department of public works, go out, check them with a ruler if they are 12 inches or essentially, or their eyes, um, <laughs> and uh, Mo, but uh, all the rest have been fairly minimal. All right. Anybody have any questions on any of these reports? Well, thank you for that, Jared. I, I do have one question. Uh, don't you think 567 pages in a commission report is a, a lot? Oh, we're, we're going paperless, so we figured we could just include everything now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> was there a couple? There's some duplication, I thought. Was yeah. there? Was there? Well, yeah, I, uh, I don't know. I thought there was, maybe. Most of the documents are the same from the Initial site plan design. and the condition. Oh, use. sure. Yeah, yeah for, <laughs> each, for each one, and you guys were being thorough and putting all the attachments for each action <laughs> item. Again, yeah. Oh, way to stick up for a minute. Thank you, Henry. <laughs> All right. That's 567. Anything else for the good of the meeting tonight? Otherwise, we'll take a motion to adjourn. Move, move to adjourn. So, second. So second. Uh, motion by Henry, second by Ivan that we adjourn. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Against. Motion carried. We're adjourned at exactly 6 p.m. Have a great night, awesome. everybody.